the moon might be hiding trillions of dollars worth of materials beneath that dusty surface, and NASA is about to get a piece of it soon. Their new lunar drilling tech just passed its first big test, and it could open up an entirely new frontier – space mining. This isn't just a scientific milestone. This could change the US economy forever, and maybe even reshape life on Earth. That's because they found something rare in lunar soil – something that could become essential for us in the future – helium-3. Ok, so you know helium, right? It's the gas that makes birthday balloons float. Helium-3 is not that. It's a special isotope of helium, which basically means it has the same number of protons – two, by the way – but a different number of neutrons. That's chemistry speak for it's rare, like super rare. Here comes the sad part. Earth had helium-3 once – a lot of it, actually. But during our planet's formation, a lot of it escaped into space. Turns out, it's super light, so it didn't stick around. But we can still find it here and there, mostly inside our planet. I mean, there's some of it literally trapped underground. Or even a lot, as some recent studies might suggest. But still, the problem is that extracting helium-3 is expensive, limited, and seriously difficult. So difficult, in fact, that getting it from the moon suddenly sounds like a piece of cake. To really understand why extracting helium-3 in space might be easier, we need to quickly compare Earth and the moon. So here's the sun, right? This huge ball of fire in the sky constantly shoots out tons of helium-3. When this helium-3 reaches Earth, our planet's magnetic field acts like a giant invisible shield, basically saying, nope, not here, and it deflects most of it away. But the moon doesn't have a friendly protective magnetic field like Earth does. So when helium-3 reaches the moon, it hits the surface directly and gets trapped in the lunar regolith. I'm talking about that loose layer of dust, soil, and rocky debris covering the moon. And there might be tons of it. Literally. Some estimates put it somewhere between 1 and 3 million tons of helium-3. The best part is that almost all of it is probably sitting right in the top layer of lunar soil. So instead of heavy-duty drilling, it could be as easy as just scooping up some moon dust. That's why a lot of people think getting helium-3 from our natural satellite could actually be way easier, or maybe even cheaper, than digging deep underground here on Earth. Now, you're probably thinking, why go through all that trouble? I mean, if it doesn't work for birthday balloons, what's the big deal with helium-3? Well, for starters, it's already being used in advanced medical tech, like magnetic resonance imaging and x-ray. But here's the real game-changer. Helium-3 could actually end our dependence on fossil fuels for good. This rare isotope could be used for advanced nuclear fusion reactors here on Earth. In other words, it could give us nuclear energy that's not just super efficient but a whole lot safer, too. See, most nuclear power plants today run on a process called fission. They use uranium-235, and when those atoms split, you get a ton of energy. But you also get something else – radioactive waste. And yeah, it's just as dangerous as it sounds. But helium-3 is different. It could power future reactors with a process called fusion. If you mix helium-3 with a type of hydrogen called deuterium, you get a lot of energy, but without the dangerous waste. It could be cost-efficient, too. Let's say a single space shuttle cargo bay could carry about 25 tons of helium-3. That would be enough to power the entire United States for a year. And scientists believe there's enough helium-3 on the moon to power the whole world for 10,000 years. These are only estimates for now. But the future potential is so exciting that the demand for helium-3 is already skyrocketing. And so is its value. In 2024, some experts say that the helium-3 market was worth about $670 million. This year, it's expected to hit around $730 million. And 10 years from now, experts believe it could reach nearly $1.6 billion. Sorry for all the numbers. I just wanted to show you why mining the moon matters. It might actually save us from a future energy crisis by giving us almost endless, clean nuclear power. Everything sounds great so far, but there is one big challenge. 
mining helium-3 on the moon is one thing. Bringing it back to Earth is a whole different story. So let's look at one possible solution. First, robots or specialized machines would drill into the lunar soil, or simply scoop up moon dust, to collect the helium-3. Then it gets packed into containers and launched off the moon, heading for Earth. When the containers get close to Earth, a ship called the Space Rapid Transit will pick them up in orbit. Think of it as a reusable space truck with engines that can even use air for thrust. Finally, the ship would land at an airport here on Earth. From there, the Helium-3 would head straight to power plants, giving us clean, safe, and almost unlimited energy. See how challenging it sounds, right? Of course, specialists are still figuring out the best way to transport Helium-3. But one thing is certain, we're getting closer and closer to building a full mining base on the moon. NASA recently tested a new drill technology called Trident. And as soon as it touched the lunar surface, it started working right away and performed perfectly. For now, its main purpose is to bring soil to the surface so scientists can study it. They want to learn more about how strong the lunar regolith is and how it reacts when drilled. That's definitely an exciting step towards extraterrestrial mining. Because it's not just helium-3, you know. There are a lot of other valuable things that can be taken from the moon. For example, there's water ice on the moon. And from that, we could extract oxygen and hydrogen. Then there could be rare and expensive metals like platinum, rhodium, and iridium. We could even mine iron, silicon, and aluminum, which would be perfect for building things directly in orbit, like future space stations or other infrastructure. Now that we know how important mining the moon could be, you're probably wondering, is any of this even allowed? I mean, who actually owns the moon? The short answer? Nobody. Even though NASA is up there doing research, that doesn't mean the United States owns the moon. Back in 1967, some nations signed the Outer Space Treaty. It basically says no one can claim ownership over our natural satellite or any other celestial body. Not an asteroid, not a planet, not even a random rock floating out there. So if a country wants to explore the moon, sure, they can do it. But they can't plant a flag and say, this is ours now. Here's where it gets messy. Companies. There isn't much of an agreement about what private businesses can and can't do out there. For example, a private company sets up a moon base. They land a successful spacecraft, build a small station, and even start digging. The base itself belongs to them, sure, but the land they're sitting on does not. Everyone is on the same page up to that point. The tricky part is, the treaty doesn't really spell out what happens to the materials they dig up. Nobody is totally sure if those resources would even belong to them. And if the materials are not technically the company's, can they even sell them? It's hard to say. So yeah, sorry. Even if you had the cash to build your own lunar base, you probably can't just scoop up helium-3 and bring it back as a souvenir. I mean, unless you want to risk becoming the first person ever banned from the moon. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.